Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Um, <laughs> I'm really going to try to actually get this video uh, recorded in the way I like, loaded, and posted today. So let's cross our fingers. I guess if you're seeing this, I was successful. Um, I had previously recorded this on Friday to, to publish on Saturday. However, I did a lot of de-stashing in this coloring book collection and I spent a lot of time, this was a hard one where I spent a lot of time going back and forth and so I don't feel like it was a very useful coloring book collection video because I was doing a lot of flipping back and forth between books. So what I've done is I have two piles now. I have the pile I'm going to keep and the pile I'm going to de-stash and I'm going to show you both. So. This is part of my coloring book and completed pages collection. I believe we are on part six. We are working our way alphabetically through the bulk of my bookcase. If I have more than one book by coloring artist, it's in this big group that we're covering week to week. Then I'll have one offs. Then I'll have um, color by numbers at the end as well. So. This week will all be Dover related books. Um, the cool thing about Dover is sometimes you can find sales on their site, Dover Publications. Sometimes you can find sales on Amazon. So um, it's great to kind of shop both if you're looking for particular books. And uh, weirdly, I've not bought anything from Creative Haven in a while and I'm actually surprised at that. Um, but this was one of the reasons I wanted to de-stash because a lot of these have been sitting here for, I bought a lot of Creative Haven my first year or two of coloring and a lot of them have just sat here and well, most of them, let's be real, most of my bookcase um, is not getting colored as often. So I wanted to make some hard decisions regarding what I think I was gonna actually color and what I'm keeping for personal collective purposes that I'm going to color in, but I have other reasons too. And then there's a group that I could part with. And I was very successful. I actually de-stashed about a third of the books that I have. So, um, but it's probably going to surprise you some of the books I de-stashed. But uh, I think once I explain why, you'll understand. You will be seeing some completed pages as we go along. And um, you may see one of the reasons that, it's probably one of the reasons I stopped coloring these for a while because I was getting very frustrated with this particular medium. And you will see why. Okay. So I think they're, they're kind of scattered. Um, I think all the ones I kept were mostly Teresa Goodridge, Marjorie Sarnett, couple Marty Nobles and then um, a couple other artists so but Marjorie Sarnett is um, she her book Creative Cats was the second coloring book I purchased maybe or the first I think it might have been the first like adult coloring book I had purchased um, even before Joanna Bassford and so uh, not only do I love her work but it's very nostalgic for me like she's kind of what catapulted me, helped catapult me into adult coloring. So adult coloring books, I should say. And um, I really like her art. So Best Dressed Pets. Now the Creative Haven books are single-sided. I'm going to make sure I know where the camera's at this time too. Because I think I was flipping a lot of off-camera last time. They are single-sided, they are perforated. The paper is between Amazon paper and like high-level cardstock quality. I'd say it actually leans to the higher quality paper side because um, as you'll see, I use a lot of water-based mediums in these and they work out really well. That's really cute. I actually have an, uh, an abandoned whip in here. I'll use a combination of like alcohol markers for big areas and then use um, the Arteza Real Brush markers for like smaller areas. 
and um, as you can see those work really well in this book I don't have a lot of problems with pilling or anything or paper damage unless I just do layer upon layer upon layer so I have a lot of success using watercolors in these books without a lot of um, wrinkly or I treat them like I do Amazon paper so again these are the books I'm going to keep and this is hopefully going to be a lot more efficient video now that I'm doing this Christmas cats And here we show one of the my biggest areas of frustration with what I used in these books. So at the time I was heavily into using Arteza Everblend markers and um, the first generation, not the ones that are out now, I believe. Um, and they blend really well in this paper. They do really well, but the problem is they yellowed terribly, as you can see. And so you're going to see a lot of this happening in the Creative Haven books, which is frustrating. Um, there's a part of me that kind of wants to rebuy this book, honestly, so that I don't have that issue. And I may. In that case, I'm willing to add it to the de-stash pile if somebody doesn't care that one page is colored and the other two are yellowed. Like, you know, maybe somebody's like, I don't want to color any of those pages anyway. So, African Glamour, also by Marjorie Sarnett. Sorry, these are all by Marjorie Sarnett. Do you have a completed page in here that was uh, alcohol markers? Fiesta Mexican Talavera Designs. Sorry, I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. Or a drink of coffee. Festive Mexican Talavera Designs by Marjorie Sarnett. And there are 31 images in the basic Creative Haven books. So here was the first book I ever, I kind of got in the adult coloring book range. I have a completed picture on here, but it is in a, it is in a photo frame somewhere in this mess of a room that, because I haven't put stuff back up on the walls. Um, I will show that like in a later video, but it's going to be this page and, um, it was the first like page that I, after watching Peta Hewitt sat down and like, was like, I'm going to use my Prismacolors because of course Prismacolors were the first thing I bought. We're going to do soft layers and shading and this and that. And like, it turned out spectacular, but that picture took me forever and definitely got me on the route of I run out of patience with a picture after a length of time and just want it done. So that was before I really had discovered markers, which I think was the next couple months. Birds and Blossoms coloring book. This was all different types of pencil. Um, I know this was Black Widow. I don't think I liked those on this paper as much. The Prismacolors did just fine. 
I think these might have been Arteza. I, and then I just, of course I didn't label them, so I don't know. But it turned out okay. I think these pages, because early on I was coloring in this book a lot using colored pencils and then using like my real brush pens, this is primarily the books I use them in because they do so well. Um, I think these books get a little intimidating to me in that I feel like I can't just do marker or I can't just do, it's got to be something extra, right? Like. And it's silly because I have marker images in here. This is um, Creative Kittens, by the way, by Marjorie Sarnett. Um, again, all these, sorry, just hit the mic. All these books have been by Marjorie Sarnett. But this one I did marker, a little bit of a Tombow pen, and then wet down the inside of it, and then outlined it with the, the marker itself. Did a little bit of shading. I left the cats white and did some shading with like a pink colored pencil. Down here I tried, so pencils I I feel like have done really well except I don't like how Black Widow does on this paper. And the Faber-Castell Polychromos I don't like how they do on here. But that's just me. But I do think Prismacolors do really well in this in these types of books. I know I really should be coloring more in these. I love Marjorie Sarnett's work. The extra designs, I really, when I first started coloring, I was of the mindset that I've got to fill them all in all different colors. <laughs> and like now I'm probably more, more along the lines of, well, these will be a certain color. These I might make the same color as this part of the cat. You know, they don't have to all be that way. Um, and uh, as I always tell Chris, it, it, if you really just feel like it's too much, just take a black marker and <laughs> color <laughs> color those sections black and just mark, just cover them up. Magical fairies. Anything she does that's fantasy related, I, I really like. Okay, just making sure we are still in camera. I was having a real problem with that Friday. Friday was not the best day. I really like this picture, honestly. So this is the page I've done in here. Actually, at this point, I think I can just take the extra pieces of paper out. It's not doing anything. So this was maybe 2018, 2018. The background is just a marker, but then pretty much everything else is the Arteza Real Brush pens and um, then some shiny gel pens been added in and uh, really like how she turned out. Got a little messy and tried to white at the time I only had a white gel pen, tried to white out some of the splotchiness and then go over it with a marker, which didn't do great, but I still like the picture. Oh, I have another one in here. I forgot to, good thing I'm going back through this. Yep. So I did this one a couple years ago. For some reason I saw it and I thought Sanderson sisters instead of fairies. I thought witches and so I made them up like the Anderson sisters and I did a video on it and I had a lot of fun talking about like um, fun facts from the show and uh, used a variety of things in here. This one I do, I think, I thought I used the real brush pens and not the real brush pens, Everblends in this blending down here but I don't see any yellowing so we're probably okay. But, yeah, I was really pleased with that. I had a lot of fun doing that one, for sure. Fanciful Foxes by Marjorie Sarnett.
I would really like one year I did Sarnet in September and I really enjoyed that. That might have been the year I did the Sanderson Sisters and I'd like to do that again. I just usually I have watercolor summer going on and September is usually a busy month but I'd really like to do that this year because I just don't feel like she gets a lot of recognition. This is another one you can see we have a big yellow mess on my hands. And this was all Arteza Everblend alcohol markers. Beautiful page. I mean, that's the reason I use them. I really love how they blended in the colors, but this is the massive mess that I get every time. That one doesn't seem to be too bad, so it's this one. I don't know. There might be a part of me that is kind of thinking about rebuying rebuying these that have had so much yellowing damage that I'm keeping because I do like them. And the cool thing is these are perforated so I can bring, I can pull out the pictures and still, you know, count them as pages completed. They're not going to have to go with the book. This is actually another abandoned whip I had that I wouldn't mind finishing, I think. I was going to do the rest in grays. It was some challenge where you just did color within a certain circle on the page. But, yeah. I may, I mean, I'm going to keep it, but I'm probably going to rebuy that one. Enchanted. As I said, I really love her fantasy books. And I apologize. I did not realize how bright that was on the pages on the books I literally just got out of the bed and was like I better make this now if I'm gonna make this this weekend I was going to do it yesterday and then I went swimming and I was so sore and tired and I've just been tired because I've had to ration some meds this week because I realized I'm seeing my doctor a week later than I usually do and I can't get refills until I see them so I've not been sleeping well this week love this picture farm sweet farm But anyway, I was so exhausted yesterday. I was like, I just can't. I wanted to re-record it. And I was like, I just can't. And then I got this morning. And I was still also very tired. And I was just like, I need, to, I need to go ahead. It's already, the stack's already pulled out. I've already sorted everything. Let's get this rolling. And so here I am. Normally I would do these on a Friday or Saturday, but, you know, got to do what we got to do. So this was alcohol markers <clears throat> in the background. I think I used some of the real brush pens here on the flowers and then some glittery gel pen. And then I did some uh, shading around the kale. I'm not sure if you can see it real well with uh, pastel pencils. She turned out real bright. I like that a lot. Might have been the last uh, Creative Haven page I've done. Now, this isn't a Creative Haven book, but because it's still Marjorie Sarnet, I lumped it in with the books. This is by Racehorse Publishing. I love the pictures in here. I just don't like the paper. And you'll see I've tried coloring a page in here and I actually was not happy with how... I, I know if it's a book that alcohol marker does not want to play well in that it's going to be a book I have a problem with. <laughs> These are really cute pictures. So this was the page I did and 
I just, like, my markers were streaking really badly, and they were drying really fast on the paper. Like, honestly, I have more trouble with this than I do Amazon paper, and that's saying something. So, I'm going to keep this, because I love the pictures in it. I'm going to look at the possibility of maybe just scanning and printing these on better paper. But I do like the pictures, so... I also give it one more try. Maybe I was just using some paper doesn't like high end markers because um, the output's not fast enough. Like it dries really fast, and so sometimes you have to use like cheaper markers on certain types of paper. And and those books never last long around here. I think I've got like the. Zen Doodle, I think is what it's called, series. Um, the paper's bad about that. And so usually I don't keep those or I don't buy those because I just know the paper is not conducive to what I really like. But there, I think I've had a couple color by numbers, though I can't see them right now that are like that. I don't know, maybe I've destashed those. Who knows anymore? There's also Dover Spark, which is kind of like Creative Haven, but simplistic images kind of for a younger, younger crowd. However, I love them so much, you know, colorings for everybody, but like, I feel like these are more simplistic pages in the Dover Sparks books. There's 30 illustrations in here and they are also one-sided. I actually got pretty... I de-stashed a number of my Dover Spark books, but this one was a keeper for sure. Because I love these little circles and the animals. They're very cute. <laughs> a little bear on the teddy bear. Holding another teddy bear, or is that a little bitty baby bear? Oops. I don't know if the paper quality is the same or any different because I haven't colored in this yet. But it doesn't feel massively different. Love that. These are just adorable. We also have the Dover Coloring Book, if you see this logo up here, series. These are a little bit thinner books because they are double-sided. They're probably for younger people who, um, and again, pretty simplistic images. I just love this darn, these images. <laughs> I did one in here with, tried to do just pencil, and I remember my poor wrist was ready to just give up and and roll over at the end of this picture and um i don't know what i tried to use for the stars i don't know if it's white gel pen or it might have been white posca paint and it just that dark blue it just bled through but um you can even see it bled through a little on the opposite side however if i used pencil i could probably cover most of that up but i just really like these pictures and so there's a possibility, <laughs> this makes me think of Tammy from Tammy Colors too, because she loves Headless Horseman and uh, the, the story. And I, I wish somebody, some coloring book artist out there would come out with a Headless Horseman type book. Um, that, I think that would be fun, or at least a section devoted to it. But the fact that it's a little turtle, like I think that's so stinking cute. See, that's the problem is I like both sides of those pictures. I think I'm going to have to try to scan and print these out on different paper. Because I want to keep so many of them. But I can't just use pencil. It's just, I can't. Even though my softest pencils is not going to work. So. So yeah, I'm going to keep this. Sorry, now I'm trying to show you every picture in the book. 
So I'll probably just scan and print these out separately. But it is a super cute book. The paper is a little thinner because I can see the lines on the other side. Or maybe it's not because the other, other one's one-sided, so how would you know, right? I think that's the only Dover one I kept, too. John Green, Glorious Songbirds. Now me, I am a bit of a rebel colorist, and a lot of times I will see a you know picture of a bird or some animal in nature, and I'll be like, I don't want to color it that color. I want to color it something else. Or I'll get locked in because I'm like, I've got to color it a certain color, and I got to make it the right color. But every so often I'll get books that I basically call project books where I'm like, I'm going to color this like it's supposed to be. Um, and so this book is going to be that for birds because I love birds. And this says what the name of the bird is um, wh and what the colors, the typical colors of that bird are. Even mentions what fl flowers there are if they're around the flowers, which I think is neat. It's a beautiful book. I actually have one book about poisonous plants that has sat on my shelf for a couple years now. I was I was doing really good. I got three or four pictures in a row done. With pencil and then I just stopped coloring in it and I've got to start doing that but this is what I want to do is complete this book and like do all these in the colors they're supposed to be so I have plans for that one I love John Green's art Marty Noble I have a couple enchanting fairy tale scenes here in the spine of the book is actually the name of the fairy tale so there's like like my other uh, like eerie enchantment there's a lot of um, there's a lot of fairy tales I'm not familiar with and so that's helpful So I had gotten this book and because I saw the picture on the back and in my head I had no idea what this fairy tale was but I knew what color I wanted to color this bear and I wanted him to be pink. He's white like a white bear on the back but I wanted a pink bear so we were doing a pink bear. You know, funny enough, I said I didn't like the Black Widows, but I did them in this pa on this paper, and I really like how they blend it. I'm pretty sure it's all Black or may No. Maybe it's just Black Widows. No. I wouldn't have switched pencils in the middle. I don't usually do that. I know it's Black Widow for the trees. I'm assuming it was Black Widow for the shading across the board. And then um, just a black permanent marker for the background. Was this all pencil? I think it was. Very unusual for me. I it, Coloring in all pencil in a Creative Haven book, and this is why I'm saying there's such a page paper quality difference, is such, even though it's still a lot for me to do, especially like in one sitting, co coloring in just colored pencils in a Creative Haven book is far more doable for me than trying to do it in the Amazon book paper because you get such a smoother result stuff blends a lot easier um, like you can see here I still don't do it often because it takes it puts a lot of pressure on my wrist and my elbows but I think I put this back here to see if this black sometimes sometimes black permanent markers will yellow you gotta watch it and so I put these here just to make sure but I think at this point it's been so long I'm not worried about it. Anyway, I love that page. I actually want to frame that one. Long-term plans is I have one wall in here that I kind of want to cover in colored pages and art 
I kind of have like one really open wall. I actually kind of have another part, but it's behind the door. Um, one of these days you guys are going to get a tour. As soon as I clean everything up, I did a big reshuffle in December where I put some more of these drawers that I bought in the closet because they're super handy and we got another printer so I could have a color printer and like I have all these piles of de-stash books sitting around it's just a mess and I just haven't had the energy to touch it so one of these days one of these days about the time probably I do my de-stash giveaway Marty Noble Flower Mandalas this will be a nice book to just Kind of set a completion goal grab you know some color palettes not think too much on this one i've done a few in here i actually feel like i think i picked this up at ollie's for like a dollar and i feel like i had like two or three versions of this book I kept stopping and starting in it and then I finally just consolidated it into this one. Oh, how are we doing? Oh, we're doing pretty good. Cats by Marty Noble. I feel like these, because these cats are very, um, there's not a lot of obvious tabby markings or anything like that in a lot of these cats that, um, this would be a good book to play. Like here you could tell there probably should be some tabby stripe, but, um, these would probably be a good book to play with for patterns. Oh, there you go. And I kind of like that these are featuring like the cat with some extra around him it's not super elaborate i think there was one in here where he's sleeping in a um he's sleeping on a bed and he just looks so cute I like that one. It almost feels like they're like casting a spell or something with that combination. <laughs> Whimsical Cats by Angela Porter. This is kind of my casual, just play around with different colors. One of my, you know, funny pictures of cats. Don't think too hard. Just play around with color. Kind of books. Like, I like Angela Porter stuff, but most of the time, um, it's just still, just a little too, um, it begins with an A. It's a word. I really like that one. So I did this one again, same concept, marker, uh, alcohol marker on the biggest areas, uh, real brush pens on the little detail areas, the smaller areas here and like the flowers, and then brought in some gel pen as well. I really like doing that. I think that's probably just about my favorite way of not where I'm not using pencils in the books like my favorite way to color in these books there yeah that word I don't have that word today there's you know some days you just don't have certain words and I do not have abstract Ah, eh, got it back but some of these aren't as abstract but there's like doodles there's you know I feel like these have a little more, a little less abstractness to them. And they're just doodly pictures that I can play with colors. Like here, I can make orange and blue cats. I can make purple and yellow cats. 
I don't feel like all these have to be like realistic colors. So. Oh, more Marjorie Sarnet. Wondrous Wildlife. Oh, I do like in these books too that you have inspiration type pages on the front and back. I really like this color concept and I might, I think I might utilize something like this with the owls. It's very interesting. You can kind of see her art change over time where the creative cats and kittens and fantastic foxes, this owl book I'm going to show you in a minute, it's also a huge difference in like her art now, like the wondrous wildlife, the farm sweet farm, enchanted, the difference between like these books and her earlier books. Her earlier books have far more of these designs in them. Her older books do. I don't know if I said that right. Which I love them both, but it's just been interesting to see her change as a coloring book artist. And what's cool is I think she has prints of a lot of these pictures and stuff. So this is Owls. And I love Owls. So... Somebody's riled up. See, like, I went, not heavily, but heavy for me coloring, I guess, into Creative Haven books at first, and the first couple years, and then as newer books came out, like, it was harder for me to remember to go back to my shelf and look. And so a lot of these have sat for a while and it's kind of like, I got to start getting back to these and I got to start, you know, we're going to pare down to what I know I'm going to color in and I'm going to start coming back to my shelf. So here is one I did actually, that's a, that's 424.18. Okay. So it was April must have been coloring way back in like February or March that year because of course I liked Creative Cats and Kittens so I picked up the Owls book by Marjorie Sarnet and I did this one in Prismacolor and this was where I started putting more pressure on the pencils like instead of trying to do layers I was trying to do solid blocks of color and this is where I learned about the danger of doing that with Prismacolors and how badly they smudge there's one there I could never quite clean up, but like this whole picture was a big smudgy mess and I've sprayed fixative on it. Um, so hopefully not anymore, but that was one of the things that I was kind of like, yeah, prism colors aren't really good for like heavy pressure blocks of color just because they smear so much. They're soft, but they smear a lot. So that was kind of my first learning into that and my Teresa Goodrich books. So I am um, this is Country Farm Scenes. These were the ones that I really fought with it, mentally <laughs> because I love her art. I love everything she puts out. But realistically am I going to color all of it because there have been some pictures of her that I've colored and I, I love the format of it because it's like a looser color and I'll show you what that looks like but then there's other things where I've really you know focused on details and making sure that I color all the details and this and that and it almost turns tedious to the point where it's a beautiful picture when it's done but I just didn't enjoy it and so um, I decided to pare down her work in particular because it is so detail oriented I want to get and plus coloring in the books that I know I'm going to color in This is a, I have not colored in this one, but I really like that one, and I do feel like, <laughs> and one y'all knew, I had this pre-ordered, and one of the things I love, 
you'll see in the books that I do stash. It's always the cat pictures that get me because I'm like, I like these pictures in this book and um, I don't want to lose them. And <laughs> so um, It's a Cat's World is a whole book of cats. So um, I can now be a little more, um, a little, a little harsher about de stashing because now I have a whole book of them. This is not going anywhere. If any, if, if the rest of my collection had to go away for some reason, this would be the book I kept. I mean, there'd be no hesitation. I just love how she draws them. They're so cute. Just love this whole book. Absolutely my favorite, hands down, of hers. I waffled on Christmas books too because I just don't color a lot of Christmas. But I liked the country Christmas for scenes like this. Like this. And of course I like this. I, I don't like interiors, but like near a fireplace like that, I like those pretty okay. This is okay. I'm just about buildings and interiors. Like this one, I may never color because I just don't like coloring buildings. This is okay. This is a tree and a couch and a sleeping cat. Like I just prefer more like landscapes and more outdoor pics, but like I'm probably not going to color this one. I don't know. So the concept I, I approached with a lot of these remaining books is that, do I think I will color every page in the book? No. But I like enough, more than half in each of these, enough that I want to keep them, color what I want in them, and then maybe at some point take those out and just discard the rest. Love that picture. This is Enchanted Christmas, also by Teresa Goodrich, sorry. I love anything, Her, again, it's got a fantasy element, element. I probably won't do, like, for instance, I won't do this one because I don't like coloring words all that much. Obviously, I will color this one. Love this page. I like this one. So I settled. I ended up with three Christmas books, if you count Christmas cats in this collection, so. Now, Mushroom House, a unique little house like that, yeah, I'll probably color that, but just regular houses, regular, like, cityscapes, or, like, if you're in a downtown area and there's a lot of buildings, I just usually don't like that, unless, unless there's, like, animals acting like people or something else in it. Even then, that'll probably be, like, the last thing I color in a book. These last three are her autumn books, Harvest Scenes and Charm. And again, I think these are going to be just picking out what I like. Autumn's my favorite season, which is one of the reasons I'm keeping these. But I think I may have to rebuy a couple of these as well, and I'll show you why. Similar reasons. Like, that picture, I just, I can't live without that picture in my life. There were some of them where I'm like, really? Do I only like the cat pictures in here? Um, like, love the cat pictures and everything else is pretty, but I'm just not going to color. And a couple, of, a couple of them, I was like, yeah. But this one, I like all the other pictures, but man, the cat pictures in here, I was like, I just can't. This would probably be the one I'd be most likely to color the majority of. Huh, that's odd. I wonder where... Oh, right, I'm getting rid of it, but I can show you it. Okay, Autumn Scenes. This is one of her older books. Her older books have a little bit of a looser style to them. They're not quite as detailed. That was like the one of the first pictures I tried 
and then I used alcohol markers distress uh, oxide on the wood with like a q-tip and then use the real brush pins and I love like how that turned out so like using those as part of a picture seems to be the way to go when I use them in as the entirety of the picture it gets really tedious all right so here's my other yellow nightmare I thought the picture turned out great. I liked it, loved the blending, but again, it was the Arteza markers, and this is the one I'm most heartbroken about, because y'all know I would have been coloring that picture. Even though it's a building, it's, you know, still cute, and you can make it all creepy and haunted, so might be repurchasing this one. If I repurchase any book, I will put it in the stash. If there are people that want it in spite of the two or three yellowed pages, you know, by all means. But like, yeah, I'm probably not going to color that one. Might. Taste change, but like, might I'll probably color that one, that one, that one, not this one. So, again, it's about a half and half toss up in this one. And, um... So, love that picture. I really like that one. Like this one, maybe, maybe. If I did a, a house picture like that, it would only be like once a year. You like the little horsey. She got that fancy hair. So good examples here. This picture is probably one of the prettiest pictures I have. Um, it was all done using the Arteza Real Brush Pens. And I love that I thought it turned out gorgeous. Um, love the colors in it. Love the blends. Um, the wood did really nice. I love this ivy up here. I almost like using the, the colors for the ivy all the time. Um, feel like the grass did really well. The, the leaves. I really love this combination of the kitty and the color of the blanket underneath the cat. But I just, I look at this picture and I don't have super fond memories of coloring. I didn't hate it. It just was kind of tedious. Like, I just kept... I got about half of it done and it took me almost half a year to come back to it. I just wasn't motivated. And uh, even with a cat in the picture. And so, like I said, I think multi-mediums, using the roll brush pens but using them in smaller batches is probably the way to go. Um, but that was really what got me thinking about these books and was like, they're beautiful pictures and, but I've got to enjoy coloring them, right? Like... So, oh, hit the camera. All right, so that's all my books I'm keeping. Now let's look at the books I'm destashing. Now, with my destash, I'm going to just say, this is an ongoing project. I know I keep talking about it like it's going to happen just here soon, but honestly, guys, I don't see it happening until the second half of the year at the rate things are going. I still have to sort everything in the boxes, figure out I want to do at least one giveaway books for free like I usually do. Um, I do want to do, I'm working with Kim, my my faithful mod Kim, and uh, Tammy from Tammy Colors 2. We're trying to come up with a way to do uh, a lot of our books in our collection, like trying to come up with a way to um, like either through lives or through videos or something, do uh, some book selling, giving away, I guess mostly be paying like shipping costs, but um, we're trying to coordinate that. But again, my life's been topsy-turvy. Um, and then there's gonna be a portion of them that I just donate and I'm gonna look at local like nursing homes. When school goes back in the fall, I might check there, I might check if the library would like any of them. Um, and then split them up accordingly, and then lastly, donate them to uh, local 
uh, stores like uh, Cares and um, Goodwill like stores. We don't have a Goodwill near me, but uh, stores like that that sell things um, that are nonprofit. So um, because it's a big D stash, this is a big, and that's one of the reasons I'm waiting is I'm trying to get through the majority of my collection so that I really only have to do this one time. It wouldn't surprise me if I've given up, if I'm giving up half the books in my collection, though you wouldn't see, know to think it looking at the shelves, but <laughs> my friend Chris was just uh, saying yesterday, uh, I watched his coloring tag video. Um, well, I'll say it here in the middle, but um, definitely go watch his coloring plans video. It is hilarious. I tell y'all, he is so creative. He He does like interview with like an interview voice and he adds his own sense of humor to his videos and it's so funny and it's exactly the way my brain kind of works and when I first started out it's really how I wanted to do the videos like really put some time and effort into making them creative and I just haven't had the time so like he really inspires me when he does those and um one of these days if I can ever get back to a normal life balance I would love to convert my videos to be something more funny like that because I just anyway he mentioned in there that um, one of his friends might have a bit of a coloring book problem and <laughs> cough cough <laughs> I freely acknowledge that as you guys can see um, I am trying I am trying to cut down and I feel like I have successfully thank you very much um, been good about been more mindful about my buying this year so far now uh, coloring supplies on the other hand kind of went by the wayside this month but books overall I still don't feel like I'm going crazy with um, but it is a problem and I'm trying to do better so all right saying all that so anybody has any questions about the de-stashing I know some people have asked for a list of books I don't know if that's ever going to happen when I tell y'all this is I do not have the time to organize such an endeavor um, what I probably will do is a video preview showing all the books but I won't like list them in the description or anything I just don't have the time for that but I'll do the best I can do to give people an idea of what I'm giving away what I'm showing even if it's just got to be a video showing you guys a couple pages of each one that's what we'll do but I'll figure out something but like I said it is going to be a while and I keep talking about it like it's going to happen and it just never comes to fruition so but look at this y'all after looking at all those books that was a third of my creative haven collection that I'm de-stashing and honestly I'm pretty proud of myself for that and yes, a lot of them are Carissa Goodrich books. <laughs> Country Charm by Teresa Goodrich. Now this is going to be minus a picture and I'll show you why. This was a tough one. It really was. Now I'm going to look back at these. I was exhausted Friday. And let me tell you that that joke about the Marie Kondo method like um, get rid of everything that brings that doesn't bring you joy and like you get rid of everything in your house and you look around at your empty rooms you're like oh wait maybe I have depression like that joke that is my life because when I get down and depressed like I guess because I won't control over stuff that's where I can just like really it's actually dangerous to de-stash at that level because sometimes I'll de-stash stuff that I genuinely liked. <laughs> and that's kind of how it was Friday. I was pretty brutal. So this was part of Watercolor Summer last year or the year before. And this was done entirely in watercolor paints. And I am super proud how it came out. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is what I was talking about coloring loosely in her books. I'm like, this is how I need to approach books because I had a lot of fun doing this one and it was super quick and no pencils no markers and um, so this page will be removed um, and of course I always save the cat for last because I want to be as warmed up as I can and I don't screw up the cat and uh, so that's kind of now I'm looking at this book and I'm like oh <laughs> don't 
don't do this to yourself, Michelle. What are you doing? And I just started shading in these with a little bit of green, it looks like. Maybe I was trying to use some pencil and I erased. Yeah, no, we're going to destash this one, but I am going to remove that picture, so. Summer Scenes by Teresa Goodridge. Another completed page in here I will have to remove. This was all Albert Durer watercolor pencils. Did I pre-treat that watercolor page? Hang on. I don't know if I did. Oh, I did. I did. Okay, so to be fair, this was pre-treated with satin glazing liquid, which is one of the reasons why this didn't wrinkle as much with that many layers of watercolor. This was just one layer of watercolor pencils, no treatment. Um, you can see it still does wrinkle some, but again, these handle water better than Amazon. They're still not, you know, I would have wanted to do that full watercolor page on untreated paper with like layers and layers, but like one layer like this that you're activating or the real brush watercolor pens, like I think, I think the pa paper can handle that. I actually have a very similar looking page to that one I just showed you. No, I don't know where he went. That one. Um, slightly different looking, but I need to show that to y'all in the future. Oh, I really like the bunny and the strawberries on this one. And see, I really like that picture. But I don't need to keep up, and I like this picture. I don't need to keep a book for just five, like five, a handful of pictures. So, Country Gardens by Teresa Goodrich. This is what, but that's what I was doing Friday night in the videos. I kept bringing these books back up and flipping through them. And I'm like, this is not a good flip through experience for y'all. So, this will still be long, but at least it's, it's less all over the place weird. Home for the holidays. Beautiful pictures, just a lot of buildings, some text. I just, vehicles, storefronts, I just don't particularly like coloring that kind of stuff. And Christmas is kind of a touch and go. I colored quite a bit of Christmas last year, probably the most I have in six years. But for the most part, I don't enjoy coloring Christmas like I do Halloween and fall. So Home Sweet Home. Now again, these are books that I'm destashing. Teresa Goodrich. This was a tough one because I love the pictures like this. But I'm just Again, not big on, and I know it said home sweet home. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought it. I probably saw the two cat pictures that are in here and was like, I want it for that reason. Oh, I know I wanted the bunny one. And that one's pretty. Yeah, that was definitely one of the reasons. That's how, there's another one. That's how they get you. If you're a cat person, that's how they get you. And Gnome Sweet Gnome. I had held off on buying this. Then I was like, oh, it's really cute. And then I bought it. And then now every time I look at it, I just, I like gnomes, but I don't like the gnomes with the hats always pulled down. I want to see eyes. I want to see actual expressions. I mean, there are expressions on their face, but you know what I mean. I just don't like this type of gnome. Beautiful pictures, beautiful art. If I liked them, this would be the type of book that I would want. 
But I just realized that's... Yeah. Just not my... Just not really my cup of tea. Animal Mosaics by Jessica Mazurkowicz. I've done one picture in here, and that's this one. Using those, like, chameleon multiple tone markers, which I think I still have. They're probably all dried out by now. I just realized I tucked them in a weird place, and I'd forgotten I even had them. Oh, boy. I had a real hard time coming up with colors for that picture. Because I want the mosaics to look really nice and blend. And Jade Summer put out a animal color by number that has this sort of mosaic format like this, but they're, you know, already picked colors. And honestly, I think that my pictures in that one will turn out better than the ones I could have done in here. I like the art. I just, I really struggled to figure out how to color these pictures. So we're going to find a new home. I'll remove the picture I have. <laughs> Marty Noble, Cats Around the World. This is also Racehorse Publishing. Now, if you like pencils, this paper might do well for that. I can't say for sure. But these are, you know, obviously Cats Around the World. It actually tells you, I don't know if it's the page after or the page before. It tells you where they're located. This is the same issue that I have. I just don't like coloring buildings. Or cityscapes or anything. I like the cat's picture, the cat's book, because it's mostly the cat with some design. But I mean, obviously this makes sense because they're going to places around the world. And I, when I bought this book, I didn't realize how anti-building I was. So, cats are very cute. I just, like, this part's cute, but I would, I would not enjoy coloring the back halves of these pictures. So, new home for that one. Magnificent Mermaids. We're going to see the yellowing issue in here. This is by Marjorie Sarnett. I just, even Marjorie Sarnett's mermaids, I just don't like coloring mermaids that often. There are exceptions. So here is my yellow mess on this one. Again, this would be the caveat. There would be some yellowing on the page after and the page before. But I would remove this page so that you wouldn't have to deal with it anymore. And you can't really see it on that one. I do like that one a lot. And Creative Christmas by Marjorie Sarnett. Again, I've determined, unless it's Christmas and cats, do you need to remove that? I guess I was going to color this page one time and decided against it. I just don't need any more Christmas books. There is a whip in here. I will probably remove this. And who knows, I might finish that one one day. So obviously the ones that have a missing page or some yellow pages, those are going to be more in the giveaway pile rather than the like, hey, you pay shipping, you can have this kind of thing. It's going to be the untouched ones that I'm going to, that's why I'm saying I have to sort these. Because I don't want to have to have somebody pay shipping for a book that's already been colored in. <clears throat> Some of y'all might not mind, but I just don't want to do that. So those will probably be more in the giveaway. S'more Dover Sparks. Cool Cats by Noelle D Dahlin. Really cute book. I just kind of have this in the Angela Porter book. And these are, I mean, I like these too. Oh man, I don't know. 
just those two back-to-back -back pictures. I'm like, they're so cute. It's got some patterns. I like that one. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the problem with looking back through these sash books. Zany Birds by John Kurtz. Again, so many in here I liked. But when I counted it up, it was still less than half that I was probably going to color. And I told y'all my rule. It's less than half unless I have a very specific reason otherwise to keep it. I love this picture. Love it. And this one. This was probably going to be the first picture I colored in the book because I love me some pirates. But yeah. Some of them are really cute, and then some of them are just kind of just the, the bird, and I'm, I don't know how zany they're being, right? Like, that's zany. That's zany. That's kind of cute. That's okay. That's zany. They're, I don't know what makes this zany. What, he's just smug. So, anyway, yeah, just, we're going to say goodbye. Curious Cats. So this is a cat that is evidently dreaming about all kinds of existential, bigger than life, are we part of the universe type stuff. Or he's just flying around space having a grand old time. Could be just doing that too. I, and funny enough, even though I look at it and I'm like, I know this is a cat book. I probably won't color in it that much. It's so hard for me to give up a cat book. Particularly a cat book that has a lot of like, sort of looks like he's in space pictures. It feels almost like I'm reject rejecting my cat lady status. It's like my thing, right? And it's like, how can I give away books that have cats in them? Oh my gosh. But I'm getting better cat and dog around the world adrian trafford oh curious cats was by susan t hall by the way sorry this is about spike the dog and his companion tilly they go around the world it is really cute i just don't see myself coloring it. I got it first and I just envisioned I was going to fill out this entire book and then I know I'm not turning some of these and I should be. This is a very cute book. Now, like these, coloring these windmills, that'd be all right. This little building, that'd be all right. It's just when it's like, like this, I feel like is a little dull looking. Um, I would want to jazz up. Like, that's okay. This type of building stuff is probably okay. It's just when it's a whole lot across the background that drives me crazy. The Wildcats of the World coloring book. This is a Dover coloring book, which means it's double-sided. It gives the animal the definition of it. And then, um, like, what, where it's from, what it does. Now, the art in here is John Green. is really good. My problem is just that it's double-sided. I, I love the information in it. This would have been one of those books that I want to, like, use real colors and, like, color them all. Like, that kind of project book I was talking about with the songbirds. But I just can't. I don't see it being doable unless it's single-sided. And because this is double-sided, I would be stuck only using colored pencils. Possibly watercolor, but this is awful thin paper. Because it is the Dover Coloring Book brand. But yeah, if I could find these. If 
they could somehow take these and put them in a Creative Haven book or even a Dover Spark, I would. Yeah, this one was a really hard one for me to. I'm still unsure. Yeah. Okay, well, let's let's just set that to the side. The Cat Lovers Coloring Book by Ruth Soffer. These are breeds of cats. It shows what they are. Um, chinchilla Persians. I can't imagine. If you've ever pet a chinchilla in your life, you have been blessed by the gods because they are so soft. And I cannot imagine. <laughs> you have had favor shown upon you. Because um, I can't imagine like what a chinchilla person. That, that cat would never know a moment of peace. I would be trying to use him as a pillow. Okay. So again, double sided. I, I love the descriptions of the cats. I love the art of the cats. I just... I'm not optimistic how well watercolor would do in these double-sided books. How well, like, I have seen it bleed through some, like in that Happy Halloween, even with just colored pencils and the Posca pen making the pencil wet. I've seen it bleed through, so I'm not optimistic on how water mediums would do with these. And I just can't see myself doing these pictures in colored pencil. Again, if they were single-sided, I would see this would be a great opportunity because it's kind of loose to use watercolors. Um, but, yeah, okay, so the John Green one, yeah, too. We're going to definitely still do Sasha. All right, well, there you go. Um, like I said, this is my d stash, And this, oof, is my keep stash. So, I narrowed it down by um it's still the same length of time it was friday weirdly enough but at least like i said it isn't as chaotic as i was feeling friday about this i knew this was going to be a a big de stash section for me because just so many of these books had sat here and and especially so like when it comes to Teresa goodridge um marjorie sarnett too but i i've kept a lot of Marjorie Sarnett's more recent work, so I don't think Marjorie Sarnett's work as much. Um, but my my caution, my my red flags, if you will, is if it's a Christmas book, and um, if it's Teresa Goodrich book, <laughs> I need to sit and watch some flip throughs. If it's a Christmas book and it does not have just cats in it or animals, Christmas animals, then I don't need it and if it's Teresa Goodridge book I need to watch a lot of flip throughs and really think about it and just make sure that I want to color over half the book um, before I purchase it um, just because again I love her art and I love collecting it but what good's it gonna do just sitting on my sh shelf collecting dust um, so I felt really good about what I kept. I felt really good about what I de-stashed. Um, I only had a couple weak spots, but like for the most part, I actually Friday did a pretty darn good job. So um, yes, you will see those de-stashed books down the road. Um, just when, I don't know. Y'all are kind of going through this de-stash. So the first step is the de-stash project, the actual process of de-stashing. And so we're in that right now. And so I'm not to the next stage yet of organizing and figuring out what I'm doing. But I am glad I got this up, even though it was on a Sunday. Um, I am exhausted. I am going to hopefully just color some today. Tomorrow is my husband's birthday. So uh, it's really fun. My husband's birthday is May 13th. Mine is May 20th. And then our anniversary is May 16th. So we got married like right in the middle. And um, 
just to make it easy it was like we're not big celebratory people and so we're like let's just do this and that way we can just do a big thing for us each year and the way things are looking right now i don't know if we'll have a lot of time to celebrate our anniversary just yet because we'll be at my parents next weekend because my dad's birthday is on may 23rd and then of course we just had mother's day um, we're going to be at my parents next weekend to celebrate may celebrations and then um we're going to be at probably my in-laws the weekend memorial day weekend or at least going with them to some type of festival because my brother-in-law and his wife are coming into town and i really want to see them and i'm really hoping i feel well enough because usually a lot of times i'm not able to go to events and stuff because of how i feel so um the next couple weekends will be busy i'll have to do some pre-recording y'all won't probably get the coloring supply video next weekend that'll probably be the next um but we will still do coloring book collection videos wednesday i'm hoping to do a color and chat even if it's just something basic to kind of give you guys an idea of what's been going on i feel like really it's been almost a month since i've done one so it seems to be about the pace i'm going and then next weekend will probably be a coloring book collection um hopefully an artisto demo maybe the wednesday after and then the next weekend um i'm hoping to do my supply haul because i i have some birthday stuff coming in that's one of the reasons i want to wait and hold off a week um, i ordered some watercolors that i thought were pre-orders but they actually just got shipped out so i want to show those to y'all but i got two pencil sets big pencil sets one of them is pretty controversial i don't know what i was thinking i know what i was thinking i was exhausted and tired and i said i'm gonna splurge because it's my birthday and i got it but it's okay because <laughs> it will get used um but i'll show you guys kind of i guess it'll be like a birthday haul um the last week of the month then we'll be at completed pages and then we'll go into june and right now yeah that's about as far as i can think is about two weeks ahead so um hope everybody is doing well i um i i will say this if you're still watching you know i I feel like everybody's going through a lot like it's very unusual for me to find someone and then be like oh yeah life's great everything's going great you know like it, it seems like we're all really struggling and just trying to find the one little bit of serotonin <laughs> that lives in our brains and some days i struggle to even find that and um i know it's easy to get hard to be hard on yourself and get down on yourself because maybe like me you're not coloring like you want to be you don't have the free time to enjoy your hobbies here pretty much for the past month and a half i have been more of the i'm just exhausted and nothing sounds interesting so i'm just going to sit here and exist kind of route my burnt out mode you know maybe maybe you're in a mode like that um maybe you're trying to do healthier stuff like i'm trying to start swimming um to help my chronic pain and my fatigue and it's just making you hurt and it's making you fatigue because that's how it's going to do when it starts and you feel like you're not making any progress you know maybe you're having financial issues maybe you're having job issues where you're just overworked and burnt out and like i i see all those things and i see and i know so many people are having such a hard time and i guess what i i feel compelled to say if if you are one of those people like just try it. don't be so hard on yourself you are doing the best you can do in this world um i know some people love to give platitudes like oh well the i'll say god but the universe wouldn't give you uh it to go through if you weren't so strong enough to handle it and this and that and like you know it makes us feel like we're inadequate and stuff i don't like that phrase um kind of like at work when it's like oh well you're high performing so you should be able to work at this level for what like forever like that just no that th that's just a way to make you feel inadequate and i i don't like that phrase 
I think we are all doing the best we can do and in a world where it feels like you've got to search a little to find happiness and to find joy in your day um like let's give each other a break um i i joked again and i bring this up i guess because i was thinking about chris and i know he's really hard on uh christopher michaels is the person i'm talking about where i was talking about his videos and stuff um he he loves the color and he does these amazing pictures and he's so hard on himself and the only reason it's top of mind is because i've watched some of his videos the last few days and like i know a lot of my coloring friends myself included are like i didn't do as well in this picture as i wanted to do or i didn't get as many pictures colored this month as i wanted to do and this and that but like chris in particular i know is really hard on himself and i made a joke that if he didn't stop <laughs> he didn't stop beating himself up on camera um about these pictures that i was going to fly out there with one of those little foam baseball bats they give you in like therapy and um i was gonna whack him in the head with it like a rolled up newspaper or something you know what like a water bottle and spray him and be like no <laughs> bad don't do that but i told him to be fair i'd bring him one too and then he could hit me every time i because i get down on myself because i don't post as much here i don't respond to comments as often as i want to um i don't keep up with my friends every day like i want to and i get down on myself for being a rotten friend and like like a rotten person and so i do the same thing it's just in a different aspect so i joke about it he made a joke about it and it just got me to thinking like we just be you know try to be kind to yourself if you can be you know and let's be kinder to each other because I think we're just all going through the world's a mess. Um, I could sit here and talk for an hour about my feelings on everything, but um, and and I may one day, one day. Um, not going to in this video though, but like everything's so everything's so controversial these days that I know that video would get. I would have to demonetize that video. Um, it probably wouldn't get. A lot of views um, just because the algorithms don't want you to say anything too controversial right so I'll save that for one day like we'll just roll it all in one video and that way it's only one video that, uh, really uh, that will probably be a me talking video but like I don't know it's everything's just I feel like going wrong and the people that are supposed to be helping us are delusional or they're so busy counting they're so busy scrooge mcducking their money that they don't have time to listen to us and it just i feel like we're just in for a mess if things don't change and it's it sucks because then you feel out of control because you're like i'm just one person how can i change things so anyway and i'm saying that for i'm in the u.s i'm saying that for both sides um because right now i'm feeling pretty rebellious <laughs> about about it all but anyway so that's all i'm going to say so we don't go any more details and i can just use it as va being vague but yeah just be kind to other people because people's families are going through a lot right now and now if somebody's just being an out and out asshole like call them out on it don't let don't let somebody bully somebody else out in public and not try to step in and help like i know you don't want to be part of it but like i'm not going to stand for other there's being understanding if somebody is seems like they're having a bad day there's being understanding and that person just being a flat out now uh, sanctimonious asshole and they need to be called out on it so like there's i'm saying two different things here have empathy for people but also don't let people bully other people no matter how bad of a day they have there's just a level you shouldn't take it out on other people um so all right that is my um that is my psa for the day my after school special moment and um anyway uh maybe i'll talk about a little more wednesday i don't know but hope y'all are doing well thanks for watching it seems like you really enjoy the series i will be back 
Next time we will be getting into Camilla de Erico, the non Color by Number Disney books I have, Joshua Dunbar, Erie, Selena Finich, just to name a few, Linka Filoninko, I think I said that right. And then it'll be Alexander Franzese, RJ Hampson, Hannah Carlson. We're about to start getting into some artists where I have quite a few books for each of them. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. Sorry for the length. Bye for now.